Hello sunshines and welcome to Devaliant to Play as Astrologaster by Niam Niam. This game was part of Itchio's bundle for racial justice and equality. If you would like to play the game for yourself, check out the links in the description below. Are you fascinated by the stars and medieval medicine? Then this historical visual novel is for you. Now without further ado, let's get started. Warning. This video features talk of medical advice that should in no way be used unless prescribed by a licensed medical professional. This game is just for fun and historical education purposes only. Discretion is advised. <laughs> Mr. Foreman, oh, good. doubtless I need not explain why you have been brought before the College of Physicians this day. We have been informed that you persist in practicing medicine without a license, in defiance of the law, and in spite of previous warnings given you by myself and my distinguished colleagues. How do you answer this charge? Uh... Well, what do you have to say for yourself, Sirrah? I say... I say that I am a good doctor. I've and that my many years patients. of experience have allowed me to perfect my methods as a true physician. <laughs> you would dare speak of your methods, Mr. Foreman? We are informed that you write your patients' names and complaints in a notebook. Doubtless all the better to blackmail them with. Ah, yes, my case books. Indeed, sir, it is most useful to be able to remember a querent's history. Furthermore, you use astrological readings not simply to predict the course of an illness or judge the best time for a treatment, as good medicine teaches us, but you find the cause of the disease in the stars. Yes. You refuse to examine your patient's urine for this purpose. Well, yes, for... And you would dare claim that in these past years you have gained medical knowledge and skill from mere experience? <laughs> Then I invite you to provide proof of it now. You will submit to an examination. <laughs> oh, good. Which humor does Saturn... Oh, don't ask me this crap. Saturn rules over blood? Dang! Okay. Someone with an excess of black bile may exhibit melancholy temperament, choleric temperament, sanguine temperament, exceeding vexing temperament. Okay, good. Which planet rules intelligence? Uh, you know I don't pay attention to this crap. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, rules the head. I would say... Aries? <laughs> Silence. Simon Foreman, you have failed this examination. I only got two wrong. thereby have proved yourself unfit to practice medicine. Remove this charlatan, this carnival quack, from my sight. What? Again? I demand to speak with my legal counsel. You will regret this. <laughs> Didn't I get eight letters? <sighs> Sir, it was with shock and distress that I did learn your current situation. But worry not, Dr. Foreman, for you will be freed from jail this very day. I bade my husband, Lord Dyer, exert for his influence on your behalf, but I must warn you that the College of Physicians cannot be obstructed for long, and that you verily ought to procure a medical license. Your querent and most assured friend, Lady Emma Dyer. Don't I have... I have like eight letters. <laughs> well met, Alice, dear friend. Since your husband's death, I have oft thought of you. Fare you well? In truth, for a while I was most vexed with you. Indeed, tis why I did not come sooner. Your false diagnosis left me unprepared for Blag's passing. Instead of being by his bedside, I was at the quiet bear when he died. Tis not easy to make arrangements for a funeral after several flasks of wine, Foreman. Aye. Failing to remark the seriousness of his condition is one of my abiding regrets. I hope you may one day forgive me. Oh, nay, nay. Tis all forgotten. Besides, I think what I took for anger was grief, in truth. 
I think I verily did love that old fool. <laughs> Despite his mump-headedness and his leaving me and the children with not a penny between us. But the day after he passed, I came upon a note he had writ for me. I warrant that was your idea, was it, Foreman? It may have been. <laughs> then I thank ye for it, Simon. <laughs> it was a comfort to be left something to remember him by, even if it be the only thing he did leave me. But things are better since I did become Mistress Maze, eh? Then you have remarried? Aye. Twas the only means of putting a roof over our heads and meat in our bellies. And Mr. Maze is a kind man. Oh, but Foreman, we may not have our roof much longer. Oh, boy. Maze has threatened to leave me. The brute! <laughs> well, to be fair, I suppose I did fail to apprise him of the full extent of Blag's debts, no. <laughs> which are, as you know, not inconsiderable. inconsiderable. Mm. But what am I to do about it now? Ah, yes, of course. By marrying you, he is now responsible for the debts of your late husband, according to the law. In sooth, tis a high price to pay for a wife. No matter the marital bliss her bountiful charms and fine qualities do doubtless afford him. <laughs> ah, save it for another day, Foreman. Tis not your chub-brained flattery I am come for. Tis your counsel. <laughs> then let us see if the stars may offer a solution. How may Alice may say prevent her husband petitioning for a divorce? Let us see. Mr. Mace feels nervous about being burdened with Thomas Blog's debts and angry towards Alice as a result. I would be too. Eroticism. What? Oh, okay. Neptune in detriment and retrograde indicates neuroticism. This suggests misdirected anger. Okay. House of family and friends. A family trip might turn things around. Uh oh. Uh, God is punishing the deceased Thomas Blog by visiting the evil sins of the father upon his widow and children. Thomas Blog's legacy is the debts he has burdened his widow with. Alice must be realistic and temper her hopes. That's, I mean... So, she's already given me a letter, so we're just gonna roll for it. I want to say, like, just go on a trip. What, what, what could, uh, what could possibly go? So, uh, one and two is A, three and four is B, four is B. Ooh, she is not gonna like this answer. But it's also not the last time we're gonna see her, so. I am afraid that there is little hope of preventing your husband from divorcing you. It seems that God is punishing Dean Blag's sins by condemning his widow and children to live in pauperdom. But why would God seek to punish innocent children for their father's sins? It defies reason. Reason, madam? Have you not read the Bible? <laughs> well, I must own that though it has always been my intention to do so, <laughs> it is one of those books that one never verily gets around to reading. At least not from cover to cover. Aye, it is very true. Well, according to the holy book, visiting a father's sins upon his children is, in truth, most consistent with God's past behavior. <laughs> is it indeed? Yep. Well, methinks at bedtime prayers this even I shall be giving God a piece of my mind. <laughs> well, she's still giving me a letter, so I don't care. Ah, <laughs> oh, she took my advice a little ill. A little ill. Oh, wait, that was her last time here. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is final consultation for this clearance. Mayhap my sister and her husband will take me and the children in. Hear ye, hear ye. Nation mourns death of beloved queen. King James of Scotland tick to succeed to the English throne. Hear ye. All England is in mourning as news spreads of the death of our beloved sovereign Queen Elizabeth Tudor, oft referred to as Good Queen Bess by her subjects, expired of natural causes on this day, the 24th day of March, the year of our Lord 1603. Although Her Majesty left no heir nor named his successor, her cousin and nearest blood relation, 57-year-old James Stuart, King of Scotland, is rumoured to be travelling down from Edinburgh to be crowned King of England later this week.
Good day, Mr. Bell. Oh, I must congratulate you on your performance of the comely lady lawyer in The Merchant of Venice. And methinks your skin is much improved. It is verily glowing. I, Dr. Foreman, changing my lead paste for sulfur work very well. Mistress Burbage says I now look a picture of beauty. Did she now? Forsooth, <laughs> it is well to hear the troubles with your skin are resolved. Now, what is it you come for this day? Mr. Shakespeare has written a new play, and I need to look younger if I'm to get a good part in it. Tis about an ancient Roman general called Titus Andronicus. Ooh. I wish to play the role of his comely mother, the Lady Tamara. You need to look younger in order to play a man's mother, you say? But according to my casebook, why, sir, you are not yet five and twenty years of age. Aye, sir, indeed. Tis but the business of playing, though, isn't it? At least, according to Mr. Burbage. He was well vexed when I pointed out how the man played tight as near as old as I am. If the stage is not to your liking, Mr. Bell, I invite you to seek employment elsewhere. All right, then. Let us see what the stars advise. What can be done to make my querent Humphrey Bell appear younger? Kill Mr. Burbage. That's what you do. All right. Uh, Humphrey must undergo a transformation to repair the damage times legacy has wrought. Wow. Wow. Good angels have bestowed upon Humphrey the talent of artistry, which he can use to improve the appearance of his face. Uh, what's this one? This advises that some something refined that has been obtained from a foreign country can help him appear younger, but there is cruelty involved. Oh. Interesting. And then... It is God's will that Humphrey embraces his masculinity as he matures. Humphrey is out of touch with reality. He cannot reverse the aging process and look younger. Humphrey's bosses are impossible to please, and Humphrey should be pessimistic about his ability to reverse the aging process. Okay. I mean, that's like the most realistic one, where it's like maybe he should uh, go for more masculine parts. Because I mean, like, stuff like that. But, uh,. I don't think I like this one was stupid, wasn't it? Yeah, he must undergo <laughs> transformation repairs. I mean, okay. Dang. All right, let's say. Certain talents are which he can use to improve the appearance of his face. Um, let's just go with B. Why not? We must address your problem scientifically, Mr. Bell. Youth is characterized by sanguinity, governed by the humor blood. Therefore, we need to give you the appearance of having an abundance of blood. In your cheeks and lips, for instance. <laughs> so how do I do that? With insects. You what? Oof. One moment while I fetch a pot of them from my cabinet. Oof. Now, these are what are called cochineal beetles. Do not be afeared, for they are dead. They have been shipped here from the New World. You must crush a handful of these creatures into a powder, mix it with water, and then apply it to your cheeks and lips. Beetle juice on my face? I would not lie, that sounds mad. I'll give it a try, though. <laughs> Excellent. Me thinks the quarant was a little pleased. <laughs> Yay, I only need one more. I mean, I don't need any more letters, but it doesn't matter. I got my letters. I got my letters. Okay, the ladies are using these beetle juice thing. Uh, must be level poor little beetles, though, ain't it? How dare. <laughs> Good morrow, Mistress Fortescue. How may I do you, sir? Oh, Dr. Foreman, I have urgent need of your advice. Oh, woe! I know not what I am to do. On my word, madam, I have never before seen you in such a state. Uh, pray tell, whatever can the matter be? Tis my husband, Captain Fortescue. God mend me! He has been implicated in a conspiracy to commit treason! Ah, yes, your husband, Captain Henry Fortescue. He is a great friend of Sir Walter Raleigh, is he not? Oh, methinks I see your problem. For Raleigh has been implicated in a plot against our new king, has he not? 
Tis said the plotters wished to oust the king and install the king's cousin on the throne. Or was Rari involved in that other plot? <laughs> the one to kidnap the king and force him to appoint a more religiously tolerant privy council. In truth, there are so many plots against the English throne <laughs> these days, it is hard to keep abreast of them all. Indeed, I know not which plot Sir Walter was arrested for, but I have heard tell that the Privy Council seeks to find conspirators amongst his associates. Hence, I have been hiding my husband in our cellar and pretending he's still away at sea. But why would your husband fear arrest? Was he involved in Sir Walter Raleigh's plot? Maybe. Nay, he was not. But all London believes that he and Sir Walter are very great friends. <laughs> ah, yes. They were roommates. I see. <laughs> But what of your own friends, Mistress Fortescue? All those lords, ladies, and bishops who have so oft graced your table, would they not speak in your husband's defense? Well, dear Emma says she would speak for my husband, but alas, she now has little influence at court on account of some, well, some scandals of her own. As for my other acquaintances, they have all, all disowned me. They decline my invitations, and no one is at home to me when I call upon them. Even Sir Munchalot has stopped speaking to me. How oh dare. Even your parrot, madam. On my word, that is very cold. I beseech you, sir. Read the stars and tell me how I might save my husband from arrest. Pray assure me he will be safe. Let us see, then. Is Captain Henry Fortescue in danger of being arrested for treason? If so, what might Mistress Fortescue do to prevent it? <laughs> Dang. Okay, will my husband be arrested for treason? Is there anything I can do that I might do to prevent it? No. House of the Querent indicates being out of touch with reality. <laughs> Civil Fortescue is deluded and lost touch with reality a long ass time ago. God will punish Captain Fortescue violently for his part in the conspiracy. If Fortescue's family reputation is dead, they will go down in history as traitors. I don't remember this part of history <laughs> uh the king will sue being waging a violent war in a foreign country thus distracting him from hunting for raleigh's co-conspirators mistress fortescue may be optimistic about her husband's fate for the plot against the king will soon be taken far less seriously than it is now <laughs> excuse me despite what she might think my think civil fortescue can still use her social authority and in influential relationships to aid her husband the intelligent course for sybil is to keep her distress a secret from the world and behave as if she has nothing to fear hmm. foreign countries family and friends so this one was so yeah there's gonna be like I mean, King James got into a lot of problems, so. Um, hmm. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna go with this one. Cause I'm pretty sure she already gave me a letter, so. She can't take that letter back! <laughs> Madam. Although your friends in the royal court may no longer own you in public, perchance they could be prevailed upon to act on your behalf in private. Verily, madam, I urge you to write to them and bid them use their influence in your family's favor. Mayhap they can quietly speak well of your husband to the king and to the lords of the Privy Council. In the meantime, you must behave as if you have nothing to fear or be ashamed of. As if your husband is full innocent of treason, Hold your head high, Mistress Fortescue. But I... Oh, Dr. Foreman, surely you see how low I am come. Madam, have you not before suffered the slings and arrows of social misfortune and yet risen victorious? Well, I... You had a house full of guests purging from <laughs> all their orifices, and yet you did not waver. You suffered an attack upon your mucosal membrane by the most fiendish of New World fruits, those known to affright the bravest of conquistadors, and yet you soldiered on. <laughs> and after you played the fool before lords, bishops, and countesses, still they thronged for invitations to your luncheons. Truly, madam, are you not a leader amongst women? Reclaim your place at London's dinner tables and use it to save your husband. 
Take back your Camelot! Camelot. <laughs> Indeed, sir. I shall not be cowed by spiteful wagging tongues any longer. I now go forth to restore my husband's honor and our family's good name. Fare you well, and Godspeed, Mistress Fortescue. <laughs> she was most pleased. <laughs> I will find a way to save my husband from the tower, for after all, tomorrow is another morrow. Uh, I think she's going to get beheaded, because this is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Good God, oh my lord. Good day to you, young sir. May I say, your playing of Titus Andronicus's comely mother was excellent well. A wondrous performance, Mr. Bell. Aye, uh, well, they let you play her in the end. Your cross Beetlejuice thing worked very well. Yes. Mr. Burbage decided to keep me in the role when he saw my rosy cheeks in that. Indeed? Or sooth, I am glad the cochineal beetle treatment proved efficacious. Ah, well, I'm not so sure I am, innit? My newfound loveliness has stirred a passion in Mistress Burbage. Uh oh. She's been trying to move to me. On my word. But surely, Mr. Bell. If Mistress Burbage's attentions occasion you discomfort, you have merely to tell her so. Make it plain you wish your relationship to remain professional and bid her abstain from any amorous advances. You what? Nay, sir. <laughs> if I hear her, she'll be vexed and I could lose my job. Know you what I mean? Ah, I see, yes. If she were to take umbrage, she might use her influence over her husband to prevent you from getting work. Well... I do have a recipe for a very effective aphrodisiac. Nay, then let us see what the stars advise. How might Humphrey Bell calm the ardor of Mistress Burbage without it costing him his career? <laughs> okay. Mistress, Mistress has a choleric temperament, which, when it comes to affairs of the heart, she prefers to be the one in charge. Uh, so, like, may put him in charge of it. Is trouble with the habit of indulging in lustful passions. Hmm. 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 I'm gonna go with this one, because I'm pretty sure he's about to give me my letter anyway. It would seem Mistress Burbage's behavior can be attributed to her excessive sanguinity. To wit, there is an imbalance of blood in her body. It compels her towards an indulgence in lustful passions. What do you mean, like? She's ill or something? Her grabbing me backstage and trying to beg me? Tis an imbalance of blood making her do all that? So, uh, how do I help her fix her problem, then? A problem? Oh, nay, Mistress Burbage is not ill. Forsooth, indulging in her lustful passions is a most healthsome pursuit, which doubtless brings her much pleasure. Indeed, the only person who has a problem with her <laughs> lustful activities is you. You what? Perchance you could find a means of adding cooling and drying foods to the lady's diet to counteract the fiery moistness of her sanguinity. Oh, I suggest uh, myrtle berries, lettuce, and mallows. Hmm. Methinks I can add them plants to the morning potage she takes during rehearsal. <laughs> and if that don't make her move from me, I might start adding poison, in it. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. A little pleased with my reading. <laughs> but I got my letter! That's all that matters! <laughs> yes. Ooh. Sir, I have the best of tidings. I have managed to use my influence to ensure my husband is safe from the execution of blog. Indeed, at my petitioning of courtiers and their wives has been so successful that the royal court is now abuzz with the talk of the innocence of Captain Fortescue and how he has been the victim of a gross miscarriage of justice. A sonnet upon the subject has been composed, and I hear that. I hear tell that Mr. Shakespeare intends to write a play about it. Your most grateful of querents, Sybil Fortescue. 
<laughs> Good lord. Good even, Mr. Moore. How may I do you service? I have a mind uh, to take up a profession and would have your counsel on it. Mm. For I must say, your advice thus far has been most excellent. Has it? Counseling me not to marry that sly succubus Emma Dyer did veritably save my life. Indeed. I have heard it rumoured that her husbands have a lamentable habit of dying, if you follow mm -hmm. my meaning. In short, their deaths are most unnatural and not at all accidental. Do you understand what I'm telling you, Foreman? Oh, yes. Aye, I do, Mr. Moore. Pray afford me a moment to recover from the excess of shock and surprise I do feel upon <laughs> being told of the lady's <laughs> true nature. <laughs> now, you say you wish to take up a profession. Tis a military career you're considering, I presume? You wish to distinguish yourself in battle? Nay, tis a career in the church. Good I have word. a mind to take holy orders. Uh -huh. You wish to become a clergyman? Pray tell, how came you by this notion? T'was given me by the top dog himself, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Mm -hmm. He's a hunting chum of my father's. I, the Archbishop, is a crack shot with a musket. You should see him at it, Foreman. Give the man half an hour and a pouch of lead shot, and he'll turn your duck pond into duck soup. Oh, Lord. It seems the Archbishop has had his eye on me for quite some time. Oh. Verily, indeed. He says I show great promise, <laughs> and that under his personal tutelage I should rise very rapidly. Ooh. He even said he has a mind to make me Bishop of Salisbury. Wow. Ah, yes, the much-coveted Bishopric of Salisbury. But before I make my final decision, <laughs> Foreman, I thought I'd better come to you first. Aye, very wise of you. Then let us see what the stars foretell. Would my querent, Lancelot Moore, enjoy success as a clergyman? Uh, I don't think it's your gig, dude. <sighs> Vile hidden motives of her work, promises will be broken. Probably, yeah. Moore's ambitions are misguided. He's being unrealistic about his suitability for the- Yeah, he is very not suitable. Serving under the Archbishop would be unpleasant, to say the least. Good angels would transform Moore, turning him away from his present course of idleness and dissipation. God will help Moore with women. No, he won't. London will resound with the flattering gossip of Moore's piety and seriousness, thus enhancing his romantic appeal. I gotta tell you the truth, my dude. But I don't have a letter from him. How many more times do I have with this man? One more. Okay. I... I'm gonna roll for it. <laughs> I'm gonna roll for it. My heart says A, but... My need for a letter says B. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, one and two is A, three and four is B. One! Oh. Okay. May I discourse frankly, sir? As someone who has guided you these many years past. Uh, yea, I suppose so. Have you uh, considered that your particular tastes and proclivities <laughs> Might be ill-suited to a life of service in the church? My tastes and proclivities? Ha! <laughs> if you only knew of the tastes and proclivities indulged at the Archbishop's Palace in Lambeth, <laughs> I wouldn't tell you what they are, Foreman. But what occurs at Lambeth Palace by Lambeth, Lambeth Palace, Palace yes. yes, I'm well aware. Uh, but as for his offering you the Bishopric of Salisbury, well, the stars do indicate that his Grace has promised the Bishopric of Salisbury to every dean from here to the Isle of Man. He is unlikely to ever grant it to you. Verily? He has? How very wrong of the Archbishop to make promises he does not keep. <laughs> you were very right to warn me of this, for I do not think I could bide the company of such a man for long. <laughs> I thank you, Foreman. You have served me well this day. All right. He was pleased with my reading. Was this his last 
one. <gasps> Aww. Okay, it's just as well. It would have been a shame to hide my figure under the those shapeless clergyman's robes. Here comes Crafty. <laughs> ah, God give you good day, madam. Good day to you, sir, and well met. And how fares your husband, Lady Dyer? I recall you were worried for his health. Twas the Dyer beat. The disease you judged him as having. He died from wounds that never healed. <laughs> you mean the wound on his lordship's hand? But I recall you saying it was quite small. Oh, yes, that wound was, but he acquired many more. <laughs> One evening, whilst we were summering at our country estate, the stone railing of our balcony gave way, and he fell into some particularly <laughs> rose bushes. Verily? How distressing. And he never recovered from the scratches? Nay. Twas most tragical and so forth. Well, I am sorry to hear of your husband's passing, but, uh, madam, are you quite well? You do not seem yourself this day, if I may remark on it. Dr. Foreman, I am more myself than you have ever seen me. <laughs> but during these past years, I have been playing a role. A role that has served me well, to be sure. But I am grown tired of it. Indeed, I am not proud of my dissembling. I'm not proud of some other things besides. And doubtless you are come to unburden yourself by confessing your... Uh, what those things are. <laughs> what? Nay, of course not. As I was saying, whilst my dissimulations have afforded me wealth and status, such a life as I have lived has not fulfilled me. For though I have been married many times, and known many men, I have always lacked one important thing. A moral compass? <laughs> that thing is love. <laughs> In short, I have found love, Dr. Foreman. And the object of my affection is not one of these privileged popinjays I've met at the royal court. Nay. It is a real man. A man who knows what it is to make his own way in the world. Oh, you you mean to say, you mean you and I? Verily, upon seeing him play Tamara in Titus Andronicus at the Globe one even, I was, well, my heart was took. I, I see. see. You are in love with a player then, I take it. Aye. And I wish to marry him. But first... I would know whether such a match be advisable. Probably not. Is our love true? Or is my considerable coin and property where his true affections lie? I mean... Such a deception would not surprise me in truth. Well, hey, that you traded doubtless it. it would not. Let us see whether the stars can tell us. Okay. Emma's bow hides evil intentions. Emma's head has been turned. She is deluded in her hopes. Shh. Oh, wait. The mind of Emma's beloved is on the coin he could inherit when Emma dies. I don't think he's that smart. If Emma and I were romantic partners, I would not trust her. <laughs> Emma's duty as a wife would be impossible to fulfill. It is cruel to deprive a man of children. Meh. Emma's relationship with her young man has changed her. Marriage between Emma and her beau would be fatal and enduring. Okay. Um. Let's see. One and two is A. I'm gonna skip B. Go three and four is C. Four! The stars bless the match between you and the young man. They do not think it would be bad for him in some way. They do not judge. <laughs> the chart indicates that your relationship with this young man has changed you. It would be a faithful, lasting marriage. Verily, I must own I dared not expect such a happy ending to my story. I thank ye heartily, Dr. Foreman. <laughs> 
most pleased. Oh, did we... S oh, apparently we didn't have a fourth coming. Okay. I shall this evening to the playhouse go and ask my Humphrey to ask me to marry him. <laughs> Thank you for joining me as I played Astralagaster by Niam Niam. The, <laughs> that name. The next episode will be out shortly. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, a follow, and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the new episode drops. Also, don't forget to check out the link to the completely free Discord server to chat about games and whatever else is on your mind. Let's keep the comments chill so no hate or spoilers as I'm not above removing these comments and the people who make them. That's all for now, folks, and I'll see you next time.